Mr. Voice. So this is my new chloride cell setup. Now this is not your typical amateur chloride cell because you see the type of salt they used in this uh, thing is really crappy salt. It's horribly bitter and it's the cheapest salt you can get but that's good because it contains something special known as calcium chloride. Now calcium chloride does two things. It builds up on the diaphragm which uh, I mean it builds up on the cathode which creates some sort of a diaphragm. It looks like this horrible white thing which I'll show you later but that's good for us. Now another thing it also does is it keeps the pH really low. Okay, this is where the fumes come out. This horribly horrible smell of... Uh, okay, now the pH of this cell is around 4.9. If I go down, it would, it would change. It's, it's staying as 4.9. It's not changing. So that's good for us. So, now the amount of current going through this cell I will just show you the voltage drop across the shunt I made. This will not show you the current directly, but I use this to measure the current. I get around that much, which if I put that into my calibrated uh, thing where I put in a known resistance and not run the cell, I actually get a current of 25 amps. Now I can also measure the voltage drop across the cell which is 4.77 and the voltage of the supply which is I have to get my probes right 5.1 and overall the temperature wait I'll be right back whoosh Anyway. Oh my god, the smell. The temperature of this cell. <coughs> I wish I had my. I'm not gonna wear it. I don't wanna waste the respirator. It's around. I'm waiting for it to become steady because of this plastic wrap. It's around 55, but it may have dropped or risen. But right now it's 53. And the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm keeping the temperature low due to a. Uh, water inside this uh, green bucket which is preventing this cell from overheating without the water the temperature goes all the way up to 68 and i don't i don't really like running too hot usually i keep the temperature around 55 to 60 not 55 50 to 60. 55 would be the ideal and now i'm going to show you the cathode of the cell there's no requirement to open the whole thing as you can see, that cathode is looking very, very white. And that white is very important. That's the calcium hydroxide building up. Calcium hydroxide is very important for this cell. With calcium hydroxide, it essentially allows us to... Uh, <coughs> it, it essentially prevents chlor chlorate reduction even further. And with that, the video is over. Yeah. So I left the lid open for a bit and the pH went up. Sadly, that's, that's not a good thing. It didn't go up very much. Using a buffered solution that's at 8.3, the pH went up to freaking 7.3, 7.4. That's not good. So after day two, my, the calcium chloride in the cell has got consumed, the pH has gone up to 7.4 and that's no good. So what I'm doing right now is I'm actually extracting all the calcium chloride from a batch of that cheap salt. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna then concentrate this stuff. So once I concentrate the calcium chloride, because upon heating calcium chloride solubility is higher than that of table salt. And so any remaining water in here will contain all the calcium chloride I need. And yes, this water is horribly bitter as compared to the salt below. This is how they actually extract it before selling. Good thing these guys did not do that. They just probably boiled it. Honestly, that's good for me. Because doing it this way means that I can 
essentially use this as my pH control uh, substance. So I can control the pH of the cell a lot better. Right now I'm just rocking it back and forth. Trying to precipitate, dissolve the works. Okay, so then this is the salt after the extraction of the calcium chloride and the best way to tell if something is to tell if salt has no calcium chloride is to taste it wow not bitter at all it's still a little bitter in some spots where it's wet now here this water <coughs> holy crap that's called pH control solution boys me Mr's voice. So this is our pH controlled cell. Were, it's a shutdown procedure. Runtime is over f exactly four days for you see the smokes coming out of it. It's more like vapor. pH is around 7.1 in the uh, bulk liquid and near the electrodes it's actually lower but the pH meter gets poisoned rapidly because I'm using a very cheap calibration solution that I kind of just made. Essentially what I did was I used the baking soda solution which has a known value of 8.3 Then I just sort of calibrate it from one solution and find out the error and just keep closing the gap by washing it in between That works. Anyway, to shut down the chlorate cell You can't just turn this off while it's running because you will actually damage the uh, You will actually damage the electrodes and all so what you want to do first is you want to first lift the electrodes but we're also going to check the cell temperature it's currently at uh, but the ph has remained constant all throughout this run because i have i was using buffers wait for that temperature to stabilize there it's stabilized temperature was 59.7 which basically means that when it got pretty warm cooling bath was not needed so this is how you oh my god this crust is really bad Just throw that crust in there okay looks like the fell. so as you can see electrodes are okay cathode is nice and Oh my god, the sourness of the vapor. Cathode is nice and white. So you wanna just you wanna just gently lay down these things. Then you wanna unplug everything. Now after doing so, <coughs> chlorine is really bad. As you can see in a pH controlled cell, you can look at the water. And it is not yellow. Like if this were a non-pH controlled cell, that water would be super yellow. But in this case, it's clear. And the reason why the cell is shaped this way is so that the bulk liquid is uh, so that the anodes are on one side and the bulk liquids on the other side, which will enable the reaction that can allow it <coughs> that will allow it to. Uh, produce uh, chlorate by heat. That's why the cell temperature is also hot. This is a demister unit along with this pump which keeps the uh, gases in the demister diluted. Didn't really collect anything because the unit kind of broke down in between the, to fix the cell design. So I'm gonna pour this in and we'll be back. So here's the cleanup procedure. You can see at the bottom all that silicates. They are very, they are very, very numerous in number. So to filter it, we just simply pour it in this filter. The very first cycle will have these things go through, but eventually they will stop going through. Toxic gases may be released while this process is going on. 
they fill the filter it slows down the rate of filtration which is exactly what they do You can see at the bottom it's considerably clearer. This uh, white cloud is a mixture of uh, silicates from these additives in the salt and also a lot of calcium hydroxide. It's a byproduct of the pH control setup. As long as the filtrate going down is clear, all is well. It may take forever, but I, I'm willing to wait forever if it means for clear prod, product. It's me, Mr. Voice. This is a last minute thing, but I have to tell you something about separating uh, chlorate from chloride. Now, the thing about when, when you're doing fractional crystallization of the two species, there is a difference when you're boiling out salt you only produce like in the surface you're gonna see thick square cubes or really thick uh, type of precipitate however once the chlorate starts uh, coming out it forms this really thin film on the surface like if I were to get my uh, hair dryer it forms this nice waxy film I just used this to show off the effect, but you can see that there's like a waxy film on the surface. I don't know if you can see it clearly. It's me, Mr. Voice. So here, I have weighed the total amount of yield that I did. I took so many fractions and probably lost a lot of product, but it came down to about one kilogram of chlorate, which is kind of low. That's probably due to the buffer and me experimenting with keeping the temperature low even though I shouldn't have done that because apparently 60 degrees is where you want it to be at. I was just being paranoid. Yeah.